Is diplomacy dead? Apparently the answer is yes. Thanks to former German Chancellor Angela Merkel, who in a series of interviews has made the stunning admission that when she met with her Russian counterpart, Vladimir Putin, in 2014 and again in 2015 to negotiate the Minsk Accords, peace was not on her mind. A ceasefire was not on her mind. No, what was on her mind was buying time for Ukraine to build up its economic and military potential to wage a war against Russia. Now, Vladimir Putin bought into the notion that Angela Merkel, like her French counterparts, Sarkozy and later Macron, who with the Germans comprised what's known as the Normandy format, were serious about a peaceful resolution to the Donbass. In 2014, Russia had the military advantage, but Putin yielded to pressure for a peaceful diplomatic resolution to the problem. The end result was eight years of incessant bombardment on the part of the Ukrainian government against the citizens of the Donbass. All the while, NATO was training a Ukrainian military to carry out offensive operations targeting not only the Donbass, but Russian forces and Russian civilians in the Crimea. Right now, the world is saying, hey, there needs to be a diplomatic off-ramp. There needs to be a peaceful resolution. But how could Russia ever again trust the West? Angela Merkel has set the standard for Western duplicity, and it's the Ukrainian people who will pay the price. Patriot missiles to Ukraine. That's apparently the headline. The United States, in particular the Secretary of Defense, Lloyd Austin, is apparently in the final stages of approving the deployment of U.S. Patriot surface-to-air missile batteries to Ukraine. Of course, these would be manned by Ukrainian forces, but it's the most advanced uh, U.S. anti-air, anti-missile capability, one that the United States and Ukraine hopes will allow Ukraine to put up some sort of viable air defense, a counter to the incessant Russian bombardment taking place using cruise missiles and drones. The problem is the Patriot missile is not the wonder weapon that people think it is. I mean, to go back to 1991, the first Gulf War, uh, the Patriot missile failed to shoot down any of Iraq's incoming Scud missiles, whether in Saudi Arabia or in Israel. During the second Gulf War in 2003, the Patriot missile shot down more Allied aircraft than it did uh, Iraqi missiles. There's definitely a problem there. And ask the Saudi Arabias about how efficient the Patriot missile is in defending their oil fields from Houthi drone attacks. No, there's problems with the Patriot. One of the problems with the Patriot is it takes a lot of manpower to operate a Patriot battery, 90 persons. The equivalent a uh, Russian-era, Soviet-era weapon, the S-300, uh, can be done with about one-third that level of manpower. And it takes about five months just to get the average air defense soldier up to speed on the Patriot. That means that even if the United States were to provide the Patriot today, Ukrainian troops wouldn't be ready to operate it for five months. One has to wonder whether the war will still be going on in five months. The bottom line is the provision of the Patriot to Ukraine is more a political exercise than actual increase of military capability. But that's par for the course, where the United States, NATO, and the European allies are more than happy to go through the motions of assisting Ukraine, all the while watching as Ukraine fights to the last Ukrainian soldier. This has been my two-minute topic. Remember, knowledge is power. The future of arms control. According to U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken, uh, Despite the bad relations that currently exist between Russia and the United States, there's ongoing contact uh, between U.S. and Russian diplomats on issues that the United States deems to be of importance. One of these issues is arms control, and in particular the status of the sole remaining arms control treaty uh, in play between the United States and Russia, the New START Treaty. But you know, Tony Blinken seems to be living in a fantasy world of his own construction. On November 29th, U.S. and Russian negotiators were supposed to meet in Egypt uh, to discuss the New START Treaty, but the Russians pulled out at the last second, uh, citing the fact from the Russian perspective that the United States is not a reliable partner. How could Russia begin to negotiate 
with a nation that's actively promoting the death and destruction of Russian service members in Ukraine, a nation that is uh, failing to comply with its obligations under New START. No, the fact is there there is no connectivity right now. There is no ongoing dialogue. Arms control is dead. And the problem is, and unless it gets revived soon, the last remaining treaty, the New START Treaty, is set to expire in early 2026. And if there's not a new treaty to replace it, the nuclear arsenals of both the United States and Russia will become untethered uh, by the constraints of arms control. There will be a new arms race. And this could be something that is detrimental to all of humanity. Tony Blinken needs to wake up and stop believing his own rhetoric, his own propaganda. Relations between the United States and Russia are horrible, and it's up to the United States to make itself a viable negotiating partner, one that Russia would be willing to sit down at the table and talk about the future of arms control. Right now, that situation doesn't exist.